Please speak to our hearts. You know what we need today. And I promise, Lord, to give you the honor, the glory, the praise for what you do. And I pray in Jesus' precious name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Notice the, the first phrase you find there, name chapter 1, verse number 7, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. I, I, I really like that verse because the Lord is good. You know, you, I don't know if you thought about this, but you can be in the hospital right now. But you're not in the hospital. Want to know why? Because the Lord is good. Amen. God is good. Uh, we could be living in another country. <laughs> yep. Yes, sir. We could be living in another country. But we live in America. Amen. The greatest country in the world today. Amen. You know why? God's been good. God is good to you. Right now, we could be in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But you can walk. God Go has been good to you. I was uh, saw winning uh, last week, and uh, I went to a, to a home, and there was a man. He had just come out of intensive care. He could not speak, but he had tubes all over his throat, and uh, and he could barely talk, but he was able to hear me. And I shared the gospel with him as best as I could, and uh, he squeezed my hand, and uh, we prayed together, and he trusted Christ as a savior. Amen. But when I saw that man in that in that bed with those tubes all over his his nose and his throat. Uh, I thought to myself, had not been for the grace of God, I'd be in that situation. Sure. But God is good. Amen? Amen. Uh -huh. God is good. You know, I can walk today. God is good. Amen. Amen. I can Amen. talk. Amen. In our church in Puerto Rico, we have a deaf ministry. And we have about a dozen deaf that come every Sunday. And, and we have a translator. And, and a translator interprets what I preach to them. And, uh, and uh, you know, I just thank God that I can, I can hear. I can speak. Uh, God has been good. Amen? Mm -hmm. I can see. You know there are blind people in this world? But yet we can see. Amen? God has been good. I can speak. I can breathe. I, we can breathe today. Amen? Yeah. You, know, you know, sometimes we take God for granted. We, 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 you know, we don't even think about the fact that we can breathe. Yes, sir. You know, we can breathe. God has been good. Um, God is good all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen? You know, God is not just good sometimes. He is good all the time. Yes. You know, I don't have a, a huge house like many of you do, but I do have a comfortable bed. Amen? Amen. I know, how many of you, you have a comfortable bed? Your bed Amen. Is comfortable? Amen. 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 I'm thank, I thank God for that. Let me tell you why. Because God has been good. <laughs> Amen? God is good. God is good all the time. Uh, and I have clothes. We have shoes. Uh, God has been good. We, we have, you know... I, we have work. We have, God has given us jobs. Many of you have a good paying job. And uh, God has been good to you. And uh, let me remind you today, hey, the Bible says the Lord is good. God is good all the time. He's not good sometimes. He is good all the time. But let me change around a little bit. Would you like to know that if you are sick today, God is still good? Yes, yeah. he is. Absolutely. God is not good because of your circumstances. God is good because he's always good. Amen. Amen. He's God. You know, if I were that man on that bed with those tubes in my through my nose and through my throat, you know, God is still good. Oh, yeah. Amen. You know that if I lost my job, mm -hmm. God is still good. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's always good. Yeah. He's not good sometimes. He's good all the time. Amen. You know, I don't know how your bank account looks like. I, can, I don't want to tell you how mine's look like. But, uh, you know, if you have uh, uh, some... Good money in your bank account, you know, God is good. But if you have nothing in your bank account, God is still good. Yes, Amen. sir. God is good all the time. You know, you might have a nice house, and uh, and uh, that's good. But if your house is not that nice, God is still good. Amen. Amen. You know, God is not good because of our circumstances. God is good because he's good all the time. Amen. You know, I think about sometimes when we go through hard times. You know that even when you go through hard times, God is still good. Right. He is always good. He is always good. Uh, God is good all the time. Never forget that. Look at the second thing the Bible mentions there. It says he is a stronghold in the day of trouble. A stronghold in the day of trouble. Now, let me say this to you quickly. The day of trouble will come to your life. Amen. Now, of course, never forget God is good. But also understand that the day of trouble will come. It doesn't matter who you are. The day of trouble will come. You all heard the story last Sunday. Uh, when I got the news, when somebody told me uh, uh, that uh, Kobe Bryant uh, had had a helicopter accident and that he died, I told the person, you know what, that's a hoax. It's probably spam. Right. That's probably yeah. fake news. That's what I told the person. I'm sure many of you thought that. Yeah. But then when I started searching and when I started seeing the uh, reports and the news outlets yeah. 
And I heard, I realized that it was real. I said, wow, the day of trouble has come to the Bryant family. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, the day of trouble does not just come to poor people. No. Yes, it doesn't just yeah. come to middle class people. That's right. That's right. It comes to the wealthy also. Yes, sir. You know, even the rich go through times of yeah. trouble. Amen. But the Bible says he is a stronghold. God is a stronghold in the day of trouble. He is a fortress. Amen. Now, if you go to Puerto Rico, we have uh, El Morro. Amen. We have San Cristobal. And, uh, and we have uh, Garitas. We have little fortresses all over the island. And uh, we have what? Yeah, we have Trifongo. That's, something, you, that's in the Greek. <laughs> but we have all kinds of fortresses all over Puerto Rico. But you know what? If, if uh, let's say, Dominican Republic would want to come and invade Puerto Rico, or if somebody w would want to come to attack us, we would have to activate the National Guard and wait until the U.S. sends the Air Force, the Marines, and, or because, you know, we're a U.S. territory, and we would have to wait for that to happen. But in the meantime, we have fortresses in Puerto Rico. But the Bible teaches us that God is a stronghold in the day of trouble. Do you know the day of trouble will come, to you, will come your way? The day of adversity will come your way. Problems will come your way. Trials will come your way. Tribulations will come your way. Battles will come your way. Times of discouragement will come yeah, your right. way. Yeah. Days of sickness will come your way. Yes, Storms will come your way. Hurricanes will come your yes, way. Sir. Death in the family will come your way. Heartaches will come your way. Even pain and suffering will come your way. But never forget that the Lord is a stronghold in the day of trouble. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget two years ago. Two years ago, uh, we received uh, in Puerto Rico, we received, first of all, we had Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Irma was a Category 5 hurricane. And it just crossed right above Puerto Rico about... Uh, just a couple of miles, about five miles above Puerto Rico, and, but we felt it. It was a Category 5. And in, in Save Up Puerto Rico, we, we just felt the damage. It, was, it, was, it hit us pretty hard. But, uh, you know, we, we, we tried to recover quickly. We did our best. We, we, we got generators. We tried to fix the place. But exactly two weeks later, Hurricane Maria came. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is not a joke, but when Hurricane Maria came, it's, it's like if Hurricane Maria would have said to Hurricane Irma, let me teach you how it's done. Yeah. Let, me, wow. let me show you how it's done. Wow. wow. You know, and Hurricane Maria came and just went right through Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, we, it, Hurricane Maria started at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And it just went right through our home. You know, I'm not promoting movies, but maybe you've seen the movie The Wizard of Oz, where the, uh, where the house was just flying up in the air. Remember that part? Yeah, none of you saw that one. But anyway, uh, there was a, the, the house was just flying up in the air, and Dorothy was there, you know, watching the house fly. And uh, we felt that our home was just going to take off and fly. Amen. That's how hard it was. That's how rough it was being in, in a hurricane. Now, in America, if a hurricane comes to Florida, you know, you have options. You can go to Atlanta. You can go to Georgia. You can drive up to Alaska. Amen? <laughs> God bless you. You, know, you, have, you have options. Yes, you know, sir. we don't have that option. We've got we've to either um, take it or make it or break it. or we, we, We've got to stay. We don't have that option. And so um, it, it started at 10 o'clock at night. And uh, it ended about 1 o'clock the next day. 1 o'clock in the afternoon the next day. My and it was a Whoa. Category 5 just pounding and pounding and beating the island. It was total devastation. The whole island was wiped out. Everything <laughs> collapsed. Electricity, water, uh, we're talking about cell phones, internet, uh, you name it, uh, gasoline, bridges broke down. Uh, it, it was just a total devastation. i never forget the next day, um, my wife, uh, you know, one of our uh, pipes broke, and I told my wife, honey, I think I can go fix that. You know, it was, you know water was running, uh, you know, up in, up in the air. I said, honey, I can go fix that. And she said, no, 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 don't go there. You know, still, it was still windy. So I kept on saying, honey, I can fix that. She said, uh, I said, no, no, don't go. Don't go out. I said, honey, I can fix that. I, let me go, you know, I hate to see water wasted like that. And she said, no, no, don't go, don't go. So finally I said, honey, if something were to happen to me, I have close to a million dollars life insurance and you'll be fine. She said, for real? Go, go now, go, go take care of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But anyway, 
Uh, <laughs> now, now, thank God I did not go. Amen. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, but the next day, one o'clock, everything stopped. Now, when you, when you, uh, you know, some of our church property has a tin roof, metal roof, and all that was wiped out. Uh, some of the buildings collapsed. Uh, our home, the windows, uh, we lost windows. Lots and lots of damage. We have, we have a river right behind us, and so the floods came right into our property. It was, it, was, it was a pretty tough time. It was a time of trouble, and we didn't know what to do. We couldn't make a phone call. We couldn't drive our cars. It was, you couldn't, we, the radios weren't working. Radio stations weren't working. Uh, it was, uh, we were depleted. But the day of trouble came our way. And let me remind you that days of trouble will come your way also. Days of trouble will also come your way. You know the Bible says God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. You know when times of trouble come your way, the Lord is a very present help. It doesn't mean that God shows up when you're in trouble. No, it means that God is already there. He's already there waiting to, uh, there to help you. He's there to help you when the adversity comes. The Bible says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. You know, uh, we forget many times that we can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth Amen. us. Amen. Amen. He's there to give you strength in difficult times. Throughout the Bible, we find stories of men and women that went through tough times. One of them was Job. Job went through a very tough time in his life. Look in your Bibles in Job chapter 1, please. Job chapter 1, look at verse number 3. Job chapter 1, verse 3. The day of trouble will come. Yeah, and of course, in, 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 in Puerto Rico, immediately after the hurricane, we just did our best. You know, you know, I prepared for one month, preacher. I prepared for one month for our family. But I made one mistake. Huge, huge, huge mistake. I forgot something. You know what I forgot? I forgot that I was a pastor. Mm. And on the third day, you had people from everywhere, everywhere in our church, just coming to our home to get help. And so we had everything. We had for a month. I had plenty of water, plenty of batteries, plenty of everything for one whole month. But when the people started to come, we just started giving what we had. And uh, to make a long story short, day three, day, day three, we were just like everybody else. Now in Puerto Rico, after a hurricane, you know, there's a moment of peace after the hurricane. But then after that, we have what is called uh, uh, panic mode. <laughs> Everybody started going into that mode of panic. I mean, people were fighting each other in the gas stations. You know, uh, it, it, became, it got very hard. Uh, people couldn't make it to the hospitals. Uh, so much was damaged. Uh, the military had to, came, had to come in. And thank God for the United States military. Amen? Amen. 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 And they came right in and they said, uh, uh, they, 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 took, they took over. They had permission. They had, they had these letters from the president, executive orders. They came in. They took over. Some gas stations became privileged gas stations. Yeah. And you say, what is a privileged gas station? Uh, the, the soldiers would go there and say, your gas station, sir, is now a privileged gas station. And then you had these owners, oh, thank you very much. I'm very happy. But you know what that means? That means we're going to run your gas station for you. And uh, we're just going to pay you a daily fee, but it's going to be our <laughs> gas station. And so they took over the gas stations. They took over the hospitals. They took over uh, uh, the distribution of, of water and things. And so... And because of the United States military, thank God, thank the Lord, Puerto Amen. Rico was able to recover uh, uh, a lot quicker. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. We, our church is right across the street from a Navy base. Amen? Amen. And uh, those planes started coming up and down. It was such a special moment. Yeah. Amen. 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 When, uh, Amen. when uh, we, you know, we, we, went, we left our property, took to the right, the bridge collapsed. Mm. We couldn't keep going. We came to our left, and uh, we tried to make it to the police station, and we finally made it, and when we got there, we, uh, my wife told the, the officer there, sir, I'm from Mexico. I need to make a phone call to my family, let them know I'm okay. And the police officer said, we're sorry, we, there's no communication, we're so sorry. We came back home, when we came back home, we looked up, American helicopters, I told my kids, the good guys are here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The good guys are here. <laughs> yes, sir. And I thank God for that. Amen. Because right away they came and they were a help in times of trouble. Look in your Bibles there in Job chapter 1. 
Allow me to say this, and if you differ with me, that's fine. But look what the Bible says there. So that this man, Job 1, verse 3, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. He was the greatest. That's what the Bible says. He was the, you know, we call the, the goat greatest of all time. You know, but here, the Bible says he was the greatest. He was not only a great man, he was the greatest. Are you with me? Yes, with sir. Me? He was a great, probably one of the best Christians in the Bible. I would dare say Job was one of the top three. <laughs> you know, we have David, man after God's own heart. You have, you have Job, you have Joseph, great, great, great Christians. But here it says he was the greatest of all the men of the East. But guess what? A tough, tough times came his way. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible does not describe how much money he had, but it says it talks a lot about his wealth. He had a bunch of animals. He had a, he had a big, huge business. He was a blessed man. Listen carefully. Uh, if you do the math, in, in Job's, uh, in today's economy, Job probably was what you would call a multi, multi millionaire. Mm -hmm. Yep. He probably had over $10 million in, in, in wealth. He was such a blessed man. But listen carefully. In a matter of one hour, he lost it all. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Amen. He lost everything. Yeah. He lost it all. It was all gone, folks. You know why? The day of trouble came. Mm -hmm. He lost his animals, he lost his business. He lost all the factories, all the warehouses. He lost it all. The only thing God left him with was his integrity and his wife. wife. Amen. And would you like to know what his wife told him? Yeah. You know what she told him. Yeah. She said, why don't you just curse God and die? Yeah. When she saw how sick he was, because he got sick after I remember that, he got very sick. He had ulcers and, and all, you know, all that all, all over his body. When she saw him in that condition, and of course, please don't blame her. She just lost all her children. Yeah. You know, how would you feel? Oh how would my. we feel? That's right. You know, oh I'm praying my. for uh, Vanessa Bryant. That's right. I'm praying for her. Yeah. yeah. You know, right. you have no idea what she's going through. That's right. That's right. She lost her husband. She lost her daughter. That's right. You know, when, when, I, when I heard about that, I, I grabbed my daughter. I, thank God. She's 17 years old. I had her with me. I hugged her and I kissed her. And we celebrated her birthday on the 29th a few days ago. And, and I'm just thankful that I have my daughter with me. I cannot even comprehend. I cannot comprehend what Vanessa Bryant is going through right now. Yes, sir. Amen. Cannot imagine. But folks, Job lost everything. His wife told him, curse God and die. But you know what he said? Though he slay me. Amen. Yeah. Though he slay me. Uh-huh. Yet, Amen. I trust him. Amen. And that takes me to point number three. Look in your Bibles there. We're almost done. The Lord is good, verse 7, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And then the Bible says that he knoweth them that trust him. You know, after the hurricane, folks, I'll be honest with you, I, 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 after about a week and a half, preacher, after about a week and a half. Oh, by the way, after the hurricane, on day three, on day three, I had to get in line to get some gasoline because I gave everything away. And folks, when we went to get gas, I was number 84 in line. You know, I love you folks, but, you know, I've, we, I've had people in America put on Facebook, they're complaining because they'll go one day without electricity. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody help me now. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 One day without electricity, they're complaining. Yeah. You know, one day. That's right. you know, how about three months? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. How about three months? How about going to get gasoline and you're number 84? Mm -mm. You know, here you go get gas, pull out your car, whoop, and you're out of there. You know. you know, thank God for America, amen? amen. But we didn't have that. I was number 84. And then when you get to the front, many people, when they get to the front, sorry, we're out of gas. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm talking about hardship. <laughs> you know, and there we were, number 84. But finally, finally, there was a lady from our church, she was, about a week and a half later, she was driving, driving around. She came to our property. And I said, what are you doing here wasting your gas? And she said, Pastor, I found a, a, a gas station in Aguabo, which is the next city next to us. He said, she said, Pastor, nobody knows of that gas station. I said, for real? She said, nobody knows we're there. I said, well, tell me where it's at. So I went there, folks. By God's grace, I got up early that morning. I, I got there at 6 in the morning. By God's grace, I was number 8. Amen? Wow. Amen. Praise the Lord. So they, they, they were supposed to open at 8 o'clock. They opened at 7 o'clock. So I had my, my, my car. I had our church van. And I had about... Ten jugs of gas, you know, and so we 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 uh, we uh, filled everything up. Thank you, Lord. And then with that gas, I was able to drive to San Juan, which was about an hour away from us, which is the capital, San Juan. Yeah. 
And when I made it to the Capitol, I finally found cell phone coverage. Bless Amen. Lord. And when I got cell phone coverage, bam, I was able to make a phone call. I dialed first Baptist Church of Hammond. It's our home church. And I asked to speak to Pastor Wilkerson. His secretary took the phone call, and she said, our pastor's in a meeting. She was meeting with Dr. David Gibbs. And, and she said, uh, can, I, can, he, can he call you back? I said, ma'am, we're in Puerto Rico. It's a hurricane. I'll lose communication. I'll, can I wait online? And she said, no, let me go get him. <laughs> she understood the situation. So she went. She pulled him out of the meeting. And uh, we spoke for a while. I said, preacher, this is a hurricane. This is, the island is destroyed. Would you give me your blessing so that I can leave Puerto Rico and go back to the U.S.? This is hard here. This is it's a mess here. And uh, he, he just spoke to me on the phone. And he said, um, he said, Louis, now is when Puerto Rico needs you the most. He was yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. Sir. And was he right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sir. And I said, uh, okay, preacher, I need to hear that. I said, can I send my kids? Can I send my kids to the U.S.? I don't want my kids. people are getting sick. There's no electricity. The police cannot operate. There's no security. There's no safety. I said, can I send my kids to to, to the U.S.? <laughs> And then he said this. He said, this is something that your family needs to go through together. Wow. You know, families, when you have hard times, those are times where your family yes, needs to go through that together. Together. My, I, I gave my kids the option. I said, kids, I said, kids, uh, you guys have the option. You guys want to leave? Uh, I'll send you to Chicago with your aunt, with the church. If you want that, we'll, we'll fly you out of here. And, and my oldest son, Louis, God bless him. He said, no, Dad, we're a family. Amen. We'll stay here. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. And uh, we just stood there. By God's grace, uh, the Lord just opened doors. People started helping. Uh, I remember one time uh, we had no water. We ran out of water. And uh, we drove to Sam's Club about an hour away. Sam's Club had collapsed. The building collapsed. And they had water, but they were just giving water to one, you know, sometimes one gallon per family or sometimes one case per family. But the, long, the lines were so long, no, no exaggeration, the lines were kilometric. Wow. Mm. And when my wife saw that line, she said, no, we, you know, we're, let's go, let's go home. And so uh, we left. We were discouraged. We left. We went crying. As we were getting back to the car, we saw two pennies in the ground. You know how pennies say, in God we trust? Yes, yes sir. Amen, in God we trust? Amen. Even dollars say that, amen? Yes, sir. But we saw two pennies. And by the way, that's our sign as husband and wife. That's our sign of God's reminder that he loves us. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. So we found two pennies. We, we, we picked up those two pennies. We left. We went home. When we got home, we were just crying all the way. We, we got home. We were crying. We were, you know, we, we just, without water. We didn't know how we were going to make it. And uh, to make a long story short, about one hour later, mm -hmm. about one hour later, a man pulls up to our property in a pickup truck. And he said, Pastor Martinez, God put in my heart <laughs> to bring you all this water. Hey, my God, yeah. glory. Hallelujah. He had a pickup truck, no exaggeration. He had over 60 gallons of water. Hey, my God. He said, Pastor, I cannot give you all of it, but I can give you some of it. I said, sir, I'm, sir, we have a church here. I said, sir, we have a school. I need all the water. He said, okay, we'll give you all the water. Amen. 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 Isn't that good? Amen. <laughs> and so Amen. he gave us all that water. Family, families came to church on Sunday. They heard us preach. And after they heard us preach, we'd give them a gallon of water. They would just cry. Yes, sir. A few weeks later, a few weeks later, this church right here, and I, I say this for God's glory, but this church here, you sent us the biggest box of, uh, of, of, of supplies we, we, we ever received. I mean, it was a huge box. When I saw what y'all paid for that, I said, wow, I cannot believe it. But it was a huge box. Yes, sir. And uh, in, those bo in that box, we had food, we had canned goods, but we had a lot of batteries. Amen. We need batteries. batteries. <laughs> People would come to church. I would finish preaching. And in the back, we'd just give them, here's a gallon of water and, and here's some batteries. Here's a flashlight. Can you imagine seeing people cry over a flashlight? Uh, <laughs> yes. And 
we complain sometimes 30 minutes without electricity. Yes, sir. May I remind you today that God's been good to you? Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. May I remind Amen. you that he's there for you when trouble comes your way? Yes, sir. Right. Number three, may I ask you to trust him? Thank you. Yes. May I ask you to trust him? You know, when, uh, when I was a little child, I went to, as a bus kid to church. One of the first verses, probably the first verse I memorized. I remember my Sunday school teacher had this big cardboard, and it had Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yes, sir. And lean not until I don't understand. Right. And that was the verse we had there. Mm -hmm. And I memorized that verse, and I memorized it, and that's been pretty much the first, that's the first verse I ever memorized. And don't forget that trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yes, and sir. lean not into that understanding. Uh, Joseph, Job went through adversity. He lost it all. But ain't God good, amen? Yeah. Amen. amen. Towards the end of his life. Yes. Towards the end of his life. Right. Chapter 42. That's right. God right. gave it all back. But not just, not only did he give it double all back, it. but he gave it back double. Double. Yes. double. He gave it back double. Well, you know, even in hard times yes. in your life, God is glorified. Amen. You know, even in adversity, he's glorified. Yes, sir. Even in hard times in your life, God has a plan. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what's your hurricane. I don't know what's your earthquake. I don't know what's your battle. But let me tell you today, even in hard times, God can still be glorified. Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. God can yes, still be glorified. Amen. God can still be glorified. Bless the Lord. Hard times, hard times do not strengthen your character. Hard times reveal your character. Yes, sir. yes sir. Amen. 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 You say, well, I'm going through a hard time. God is strengthening me. No, he's not. Yeah. He's not strengthening me. You're going through a, through a tough time. He's, want to see, he's trying to see what you're made of. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Hard times in your life are, are you know, when, when hard times, you know, it's easy to serve God when everything's okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's easy to praise God when you've got money in the bank. Yeah. It's easy to bless the Lord when you have water, when you have food, when yeah. everything's okay, uh -huh. when you're healthy, when you have a good job, when your car is running well, when your gas tank is full. Yeah. It's easy to serve the Lord. Yeah. But will you praise Him when everything is, when you're going through hardship, will you yeah. praise Him? Yes, sir. Will you lift up His name when hard times come your way? Do you trust Him today? Yes. Do you trust Him with this right here? Yes. That's it. Yeah. Do you trust Him with that right there? Come on, preacher. Do you trust him with your life? Mm. Do you trust him? Do you trust him enough to do his will? Not my way, Lord, but thine. That's right. But thine. But thine, O oh Lord. If you have your Bibles, I'll show you one more verse and we'll be done. Look it up. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Joseph went through hard times in his life. When he was 17 years old, he was sold into slavery. Falsely accused. He went to prison for something he did not do. But God was with Joseph. Amen? Amen. And that's all that matters. God was with him. Amen. And you all know the story how Joseph became prime minister. He became governor, second in command. Amen. What a story. Yeah. One of the greatest stories in all the Bible. Okay. And he went through hardship. See, a lot of us, we like the happy ending. We like it. Hey, Joseph, wow, what a story. He's the governor. Yeah, we like that part. Yep. That's our favorite part. But how about those years he was in jail? That's right. How about those years when he was without his family? Mm -hmm. yeah. How about all that time though, while he was in jail, probably thinking about his dad, thinking yeah. about his family, thinking about his brothers, all the suffering that he was yeah. going through. Right. Hey, in life, you're going to go through hard times. But let God be God in your life. Right. God is in control. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. The Bible says, for, for the which cause, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Notice this now. For I know. For I know. For I know. For I know whom I have believed. Amen. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Yes, amen. One of my favorite songs is, he's able He's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Amen? Amen. He's able, he's able, he's able. Yes. I don't know what you're facing today, but may I remind you that he's good? Yes, sir. God is good. He's good all the time. Amen. May I remind you that he's your stronghold in times of trouble. He's your stronghold 
He's that fortress. He's the mighty God. He's our rock. Amen? Amen. That's who he is. And then number three, he knows them that trust him. Yes, sir. Would you trust him today? I don't know what you're facing, but would you, would you trust God with that situation? Right now in Puerto Rico, we, we, right now in Puerto Rico, I'm not exaggerating. Preacher, are you, uh, look, my, I'm in a pulpit. This is holy ground. Right. right now in Puerto Rico, since January 1st, we've had over 1,500 earthquakes. That's wow. so. Over 1,500. You heard it right. Yeah. 1,500. Some 3.5, some 4. Point something. Anything 6 point and above, the whole island feels it. Recently, 4 in the morning, we had a 7 point something. And I was in bed, and uh, my wife was next to me about 4 in the morning, and everything started to shake for about 30 seconds, just shaking. And I said, honey, what, what's going on? And we knew it was an earthquake, so I just grabbed her hand, we started to pray. Said, oh, God, help us. My prayer always is, in these moments like that, Lord, have mercy. That's why yes. I say, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Yes. Hurricane George's, all night long, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And uh, for 30 seconds, everything was shaking. I don't know if you ever lie down in a hammock. Mm. You know how hammocks go like, you swing in a hammock? That's how it feels sometimes with those 6.0, 7.0s. So. You feel like you're in a hammock. And you go, whoa, what is this? You know, I have bells in our, in our home, and every time it starts shaking, the bells are, you, 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 you just, everything shakes, and you hear that, you know it's an earthquake. But we've had over, 50, over 1,500 since <laughs> January 1st. Wow. As a matter of fact, when it became February in Puerto Rico, a lot of people said, Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so we said, Happy New Year. Wow. Because, folks, you know, we want to live this, we, w we want to leave January behind us. <laughs> it's been a rough month. Yes, sir. But hey, even if we're going through earthquakes, God is good. Amen. 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 Puerto, Rico's like, Puerto Rico's like a war zone right now. Um, I've come here, and um, this has been very refreshing for me. God, is, God has been good. And I thank your pastor for, for the vision he has for this church and, and for his goodness towards thy servant. And, uh, but I want to remind you tonight, today, please, don't forget that. No matter what you face in life, the Lord is good. Amen. He's always good. He is our stronghold mm -hmm. in, the, in the day of trouble. And number three, he knoweth that, that trust him. Can we pray? Yes. Lord bless you.